Everybody can hear me? Okay. Um, okay, so uh, welcome to this talk about Gearman and uh, Zero MQ. Uh, my name is Jachim Kudris. I work at a company called Kinkfu. Uh, we sponsor this event. We have a room on the other side of the hall. Um, just a quick commercial thing. We do training. We do uh, training sessions in Ghent and Arschot. So we have a booth in the uh, hall. So if you want to, more know, uh, want to know more about that, you can uh, go to training.kingfu.be or you can go to the, to the other hall. <coughs> so um, I'm here to talk about uh, Gearman and ZeroMQ. Um, this talk uh, is here because I was wondering myself what the difference is between Gearman and ZeroMQ. Um, I saw talks about Gearman and I saw talks about uh, ZeroMQ and I thought they were doing some sort of the same thing. Uh, so I did some research for a project. Um, this talk is just a summary of uh, things I found. Um, quick disclaimer, I'm not a Gearman expert, and I'm definitely not a ZeroMQ expert. Uh, if you look at the ZeroMQ guide, it's huge, it's crazy. Um, so if you want to be an expert, read the complete guide. It's a, a fun read. Uh, read. Um, let's see if this works. Um, who has heard about Gearman? Okay. Who actually used Gearman uh, in development or production? Or okay. Uh, anyone uh, heard about ZeroMQ? And anyone that used ZeroMQ? Okay. Similar. Huh? Or similar. Similar. Um, okay. So, um, what is ZeroMQ? Uh, what is Gearman and ZeroMQ? Gearman is a, a job queue. And it's uh, an application framework that's good at handling jobs. So um, it has a, a queue in the middle. It's good at passing jobs around from the client to the workers. And um, ZeroMQ, um, you would think this is a message queue because you have MQ in the name, but it's not really <laughs> correct. It, however, has something to do with queuing, but it's more. Uh, a local buffer, it's not a queue you can see, it's just when you're doing messaging around the network. It uses queues to buffer messaging. Um, it's actually a socket library, so it's just a library that you can use to um, write codes that talks to uh, over sockets to each other. And its job is to carry uh, messages around from one side to the other. So um, both of them have something to do with queuing um, in some way. Um, so what is queuing? Um, queuing is a, a line where things are waiting. So you have different types of queues. And I don't mean the type of queue, but I mean the type of how the queue is handled. Uh, you have the synchronous queue, and you have the asynchronous queue. And a synchronous queue, you put something on the queue, and you wait until uh, it is processed and then you get response. And the asynchronous queue, you just put it on the queue and you forget about it. You don't, you don't, need, a you don't need a response. You just uh, fire and forget. You have different types of uh, locations where the queue is. Um, in the case of Gearman, we have a central waiting line. We have an actual queue in the middle of the, uh, of the network that is um, queuing for you uh, in a central place. Um, and you have local queuing, which is more buffering in the case of ZeroMQ. Um, Ian Barber had a, a very good um, example of what, what those queues are. He has the post office and the post box. And if you, go to, if you look at a post office, um, this is a, a synchronous queue where people are waiting in the line. So um, it's used as a, some sort of buffer. So the guy <coughs> at the desk um, handles one request, one person at a time. Um, so it's a, it's a local buffer and on the, uh, the post box, this is just, this is asynchronous. You just put a letter in a box. It's a local uh, buffer in that street. Um, and you don't care or you do care if the letter is uh, delivered, but you don't care how, you don't care when. Um, so we just put it in there and you don't, uh, you don't look at it anymore. 
So if you would have a visualization of um, queuing, this is how it would look. You put something uh, on the queue, this is done on the back of the queue. It stays in the queue until it's ready for processing, and then it's get, it is off of the queue. So the first thing in the queue is the one that is first uh, processed. If you would write a queue in PHP, this is what it uh, would look like. You have array push and array shift. And array push is the same as um, putting it on a, with the square brackets on, a, on an array. Um, it pushes it uh, on the end of the queue. And then you have array shift, which is just taking the first element of the, of the array and then starts processing that. This is not a very useful queue, but this is what queuing would look like in a PHP. So um, why would we need queuing? Um, queuing is good to do handling in a specific order. If you look at the example of the post office, you want to, the people are waiting in line, and the first in line is the first one that gets the free desk. So you want to handle stuff in a specific order. This does not necessarily um, mean that they are processed in the same order, because if you go again back to the post office, um, one guy is buying stamps and doing a lot of more stuff, and the other, one, and the other desk is just passing a letter. So it's the way they are uh, processed, but not how they are uh, completed. Um, it is used for offloading. If you, for instance, have a, a bunch of images you want to resize, um, you don't want your web server to do all the resizing because it's doing the web server thing. So you don't want it to you want uh, you don't want to spoil uh, CPU on resizing images. You just want to make sure your front end has a decent uh, response. So you can offload that to different servers. Um, services. Um, it's used for buffering. If we have, if you want to send 500 emails, um, and you would do that uh, uh, after each other, it would just be uh, taking a long time again. And you can put it on the queue, and you know it is on the queue, so it's, it's, a, it's a buffer that can grow and can shrink again. So you can use that for buffering. Um, you can use it to do distributed work. If you have 500 log files and you want to get that processed, you want to do some aggregation, um, you can distribute it to 10 servers. They do all, can I say 500? So they do all 50 uh, log files. They do the aggregation and they send it back to one or to another server. So you can easily do the distribu uh, do distributed work. And on top of that, <coughs> you have automatically scaling because you design your um, queue in a way that it can distribute it to 10 servers. So the moment you have more than two servers, you can just throw servers at it. So instead of 10 servers, you start uh, adding more servers. You have 50 servers, so the log files are processed faster. So the scaling is, uh, is pretty handy. Um, so scaling and distributing, this is somehow the, 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 the ultimate goal of why we would do uh, queuing. Um, we can distribute the loads. We can do image resizing on boxes that have on optimized boxes, boxes that have a lot of uh, processing power. Um, and because of the way we because of the way we create those uh, programs, those uh, distributed programs, it's easy to scale just because the code is organized in that way. So you start thinking about you start thinking about uh, distributing. Yeah, you start thinking of or you start programming in another way. And that way automatically makes it more flexible to do scaling. So that was the part about queuing. Um, now let's go to the, uh, to the parts where we actually see what's, what Gilman and Zerium Q, what they are. Um, both, they are uh, both open source. They're both multilingual, so Gearman can uh, has, has eight plus langu language bindings. So you can um, write client-side uh, stuff in PHP and do server-side stuff in C. Um, ZuriMQ has 30 plus language bindings. I think it's now more going to 40, but 
for every language that um, exists now or is in use, active use, there's a, a binding for that. Um, they're both cross-platform, so you can not only um, scale out to boxes, but you can scale out to optimized boxes. You can scale out to Windows boxes. They can do some things better, I think. Um, so you can you can do that. Um, now they're both flexible, fast, and distributed. Um, and they are they both the the messages and the workloads are not defined. So in the case of um, zero MQ, you have message you have messages, and in the case of um, Gearman, you have workload. And that is just a name that we give to that because both of them are just strings. Uh, they are not defined like you have uh, like you. Uh, we use SOAP, you have the envelope, so it's, it's, it's defined. So both solutions, they don't care what you are passing around. So you could just use JSON, you could use serialized, uh, serialized objects, or you could use Google protocol buffers. You can do whatever you want. Um, but just, you have messages and workloads, but it's just essentially a string. So let's go uh, a bit deeper in, a bit deeper because I can't go into much detail, but um, Gearman, this is from the manual or from the site. Uh, Gearman is an anagram of manager, so it doesn't do actual work, it just um, distributes the work to, uh, to workers. Um, and like I said, it's an application framework to farm out work. So we have um, a C center and a center, a C server in the middle. And on each side of the, of the Gearman server, we have the client, which has language bindings to connect to the to the Gearman server, and on the worker side we have the same thing. So we have language bindings that we can use to create PHP programs that talk to the uh, that talk to the queue. Um, a cool thing with Gearman is that you can easily embed it in existing applications. So. I go back to the email thing a lot. Uh, if you have your application and you send 50 emails, that will take a long time. So you can just take out that code, put it in a worker, and replace it with a call to, uh, to add 50 jobs to, uh, to the Gearman server. And then your application will behave exactly the same, but it is automatically more responsive. Um, a side effect of that is that you can use it to talk to third uh, party code, uh, of you, you can talk to legacy code. You have, for instance, a Java, uh, a Java uh, object that is very good at <coughs> generating PDF files. And you want to use that, but you don't want to directly talk to Java, and you don't want to port that code to PHP. Then you can just create a worker on the Java site that is written in Java, that is listening to the uh, to the Gearman server, and on the uh, on your side, you can just add a PHP call to the server, and on the back end, it will do its Java magic, return something, and you don't have to actually dive into the Java. You can just use that. <coughs> um, it has a C server in the middle, um, but that doesn't mean it's it's the single point of failure. You can have multiple job servers uh, sitting in your network. I have a slide on that, so. It has the fullback thing covered. Some fact, uh, facts about Gearman. It's created by Danga Interactive. Um, that's the company that also built uh, Memcached and Morgar LFS. It was originally written in Perl, but they rewrote it in C. So it's a bit. Um, we have a PHP extension since 2009, and it hasn't changed a lot. They do maintenance releases and they do bug fix things, but it's just very stable now. Um, if you look at the commit history or the, or the news section on the website, it's not that active, but it's active enough to be um, bug free and mature enough. And also the documentation is getting better. Uh, in the beginning it was, you have to, I don't say it's great, but they had a new style on it. We have a new CSS, it's a bit. Some uh, terminology. Uh, given we have uh, clients, and the clients are the 
other parts uh, that, sends, uh, that send jobs to the job server. This is with the language bindings. It can be, it can be any language that is available. This is typically on the front end, uh, but that's not always the case because you can you could do some kind of map reduce stuff. So if you do something with a worker, the worker itself can create a new job on the job queue, and that will go to another job uh, to another worker. So mostly it's in the front end, but it's not always like that. Um, on the other side, we have the worker, and the worker is um, an active script, a process that is running and is listening to. Uh, the job server and receiving jobs. This can also, again, be done in multiple <coughs> languages because of the uh, language bindings. Uh, and this is typically the back end. So your front end wants to offload stuff and you go to uh, the worker does the heavy lifting. This part can optionally send a response, but you don't always want that um, because if you're sending emails, you're just saying, do it, do it, and you don't care if it's when it's done, or you don't actually have to have a response value. Uh, the third part is a job server, and this is um, you can't change anything about that. This is uh, this is the C server sitting in the sitting in the middle, um, and it's responsible for receiving jobs and looking at the workers that are available, and just pick a worker out, um, give it the job, um, and receives a response. If the client doesn't need a response, it will just end there. It will get off the queue. Uh, but it always receives a response, so the job server knows if the worker has successfully completed the job. It's written in C, but it also have a, has a Java and Perl implementation. But it just it's written in C, so stop there. Use that one. Um, this is how um, the architecture of Gilman looks like. Um, the yellow parts are the parts that are that come with Gearman itself. So if you install uh, Gearman in, on your uh, operating system, you have the Gearman server. And in the case of PHP, you have uh, the Beckle extension that uh, will give you the language bindings to create your code. So the only thing that you have to do is you have the client application that's creating jobs, passing it to the language bindings. The language binding will go uh, send it to the job server. And on the other side, you just have to write PHP. And we'll have some uh, examples. It's pretty straightforward. Um, this is an image from the manual, but I think it's pretty clear that the client sends a job, the job server sends it to the worker, and the worker sends it back. Um, if the Gearman client uh, is not, doesn't want a response, it just stops here, but this one is is done so the so the client uh, so the Gearman server knows it's uh, it was successfully so this is an example uh, where we don't have a single point of failure you just put multiple job servers in your network um, you can see that the clients only connect to one and the workers connect to all the job servers so the job servers um, all have their own queue. The worker starts and they uh, register themselves to all the uh, to all the job servers. The clients also have a, a connection string where they can have multiple uh, servers, but they only connect to one, always the first one. Uh, and if that one is down, they use the use the second one and the third one and so on. But they only send it to one server, or you would have job servers overlapping with the same job. Um, the worker, if it's busy doing a job, the other job server just knows that and leaves it alone. So it's, it doesn't have a single point of failure. So to get started, you just uh, put it from your package manager. Just have a look at the version. It could be quite old, but it's uh, easy to install. Um, use the use speckle to get the uh, to get the Peckle extension, add it to your PHP configuration file, and you're pretty much good to go. Uh, here you can test if your language binding is correct. And then with startup scripts or just your uh, daemon script, you can <laughs> um, your server is running. So let's have a 
a quick example uh, on how to how we how we would use uh, Gilman. We have a, a website that has users. Users can uh, invite other users, and if they do, they get points or something. Uh, so normally we, we would ask all the Gmail uh, contacts or something like that. We get three hundred. We get a list of three hundred uh, emails, and we want to send an invitation to every single one of them. We don't use BCC. We just want a personalized email. If you would do that uh, normally, just sequentially, it will be very long. It will be a very long time because you don't know if it's three hundred people. The next one could have three thousand people. So, and you will have a timeout eventually. So, if you want to solve that, we just create a, 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 a worker that is responsible for sending one email to one friend. So here we can see we uh, create an instance of the Gmail worker. We make uh, itself visible to servers. So here we just have one server. This is the local host. This is the default one. We add, we say to the, to the, to the Gmail server what we are capable of. So the first argument here <coughs> is the function that is registered in the Gmail server. So the client and the worker have to use that string to identify what worker will be uh, called. And this one is the callback. Uh, this one is the, the function that is actually uh, doing the work. So this is this function. And then we just loop and wait for work. If the, um, if the job server uh, passes uh, a job, it will get in this uh, function. It will have a handle. Uh, it will have a workload. And like I said, it doesn't matter what the workload is. Here we use uh, JSON uh, encode and JSON decode. Uh, and then we have an array of me sending an email to some contact. So this is just, instead of thinking about the 300 emails, you just create a worker that does one thing, uh, sending an email an invitation to the other one, and that's it. Here we send a, a result, but um, because we're doing it in the background, the client will not receive it, so it doesn't matter here. Now to get the, the, the worker started, we just open command line and get it executed, and it's waiting for its job. On the front end, we do the same thing, but we um, start a Gearman client we make it listen to one or more servers. And then here we have the magic functions that get the list of contacts. And we uh, loop over that list. And for every um, contact, we do a, a background call with the function <coughs> name that we agreed on and the workload that is going to be passed. Because we, here we are doing a do background, this will not block. This will just send it to the Gearman server and go to the next one. This, so th this script will be done in less than, a, less than a half of a second. I don't know how much that is. But it's just, it doesn't wait for the mail function to actually be executed. Um, so now we have so now we have a, a, a worker running in the background. And the cool thing now is that we have, we can uh, run one worker. Uh, we buffer up all the, all the sending of the emails. But if it's not quick enough, we can just spin up four more workers, and the job will be done a lot quicker. So it's not only good to do the offloading; you can just scale because the code is organized like that. So a few examples. Um, Companies that use Gearman, um, the first three use it from in the beginning. It's the, the companies that made it big. There are two um, developers that work at GrooveShark and GoDaddy that actually wrote the, uh, or how they use it in their company. Uh, it's a good read. You can see where they have failed, where they are doing uh, a good thing. So it's a, a good read. Uh, some extra information about Gearman. It does job retries, um, and what that, mean, what that means is if a worker crashes, the job is not lost. It will get back to the job queue, and the job queue will see that, it's not, that it was not a success, so it will go to another um, worker. 
And that is good, but by default, I think the job retries is unlimited. So if you have a payload, we, so in the previous example, you saw that we do the encode uh, and we expect that format to be on the worker, uh, to be uh, it's set like that. But if we have a faulty array, our worker will crash because the workload is just uh, not good. So if we do unlimited job retries, we will just crash one worker, it will get back, we'll crash the second server, it will get back. So you have to keep an eye on that and maybe set job retries to 15 or something so it doesn't go in the loop and just crashes all the workers. Um, it does round robin shadowing, so it just picks a worker uh, randomly, so they all get the same amount of work. And by default, the queue in the Gearman server is in memory. It's obvious because it has to be quick, and if it stores in memory, you can do really quick uh, queuing list. Uh, but you, if your server goes down, you don't, all the jobs are gone, all the workload that is in that job is, is gone. And you can do some persistent queues, like memcached and MySQL. SQLite is there, but don't use that because it will slow things down because it has log files and stuff and it will just go bad. Uh, and the last thing is MySQL user-defined functions. That's, uh, um, it's a link also, just look it up. It's pretty cool because you can have Gearman jobs um, started from within MySQL. So if you have an insert of a, a URL, um, a, a Gearman job can, uh, can be sent to the Gearman server that has to crawl all the links of that page and then insert it back to that table so you create a crawler automatically because every time an insert is done, a new job is on the queue. So you can do some cool stuff with that. Okay, that's the part from Gearman, yeah. No, uh, I'm have, I have a slide on the end of that, how you manage the workers, but Gearman, um, Gearman knows how many workers that are available in, in contrast to Zero MQ, it doesn't know that. Um, it knows the workers, it knows the, how many jobs it has still in queue, uh, but it doesn't handle the workers. You have different um, solutions for that. You have a Gearman manager, it's a PHP project, project that does that, but on the end of the presentation I'll have a slide that will show you how to do that. Okay, so, is there any, uh, any other questions about Gearman? Yes. If all your workers uh, crash, uh, you uh, have a failure. <laughs> you have to get up in the middle of the night and fix that. Yeah, <laughs> no, it's a, uh, <laughs> the favorite thing is running, it's, it's running good, it's running fantastically, but if something goes bad, you have to, um, y your workers, your, job, your jobs are not lost. Your queue will just pile up the work um, until you fix the workers. Um, and then all the, if the workers are fixed, it will just do, uh, process it back, its backlog. So you can also demonize them and they will respawn eventually. Well, yeah, I have a slide on uh, how you could fix the worker thing, so yes. Yeah. So if, if one of the servers has a queue that's almost empty, putting something in there will get the will get to the workers more quickly than I think so, yeah. Yeah, it depends on the, the worker that's empty and they uh, I don't know. I don't know. You can that. But you have to it, it won't share the queue. It won't if, if one queue is piling up and you don't put jobs on the other queue. You have to you have to make sure if if that's happen uh, um, if that is happening you have to make sure your clients are changing the server they are putting a job on every time or randomize the, the string of randomize the servers they put a, because it will only put it on the first server so if you have a, a, a config file that has server A server B it will always put it on server A so we had a we had a project that we have to had to randomize the string every time so it will. Okay, so Zero MQ. Um, Zero MQ is a, a communication library, and it's an actual library that connects 
code to other parts of code. It can be on the same machine, <coughs> on, the, on another machine, etc. Um, it has, like I said, 30 plus language bindings. Um, and the difference with Gearman is it, it doesn't have a, a fixed server part in the middle. It actually just doesn't have any daemon or, or server. It's just a library. Um, it's very, very fast. So it's a, it's a cool, it's a, yeah, it's cool for doing messaging, and they say it's uh, instant messaging for uh, apps. So um, they call it zero MQ, but I don't really know why the or what's the explanation of the of the zero. So in the manual they have their own explanation. So pick what you want. Um, the last one I found was that is zero MQ, as in. It's a zero MQ, it's not an MQ. Um, so if you, s if you look at the name, you think it's an MQ, but it's not. Um, it is not a message queue as active MQ or rabbit MQ, which are actual message queues that have queues in the middle. It's also not a protocol like AMQP, but it's, it's from the same developer or the same company that <coughs> made AMQP. So they created zero MQ. It's just a socket library that's very good at creating, maintaining sockets and carrying messaging, uh, carrying messages around. However, it can be a message queue if you decide to write your message queue, uh, decide, a me uh, decide to write a message queue with it. So you could use zero MQ to create Gearman. No. So zero MQ um, works with sockets. Um, and it does, it adds some magic to sockets as you would normally use sockets. If you use uh, conventional sockets, you have to, for instance, make sure your uh, server, which does the binding, is up before the client or something will go bad. Gearman solves that for you by queuing uh, the messages you want, to, you want to pass around locally so you can connect before you bind to a port. It's not strictly one-to-one. -one. If you have conventional sockets, you have A to B, but uh, zero MQ can connect to, uh, to multiple sockets if you want to. Um, so um, if, a, if a network goes down or the network is flaky, you can, zero MQ will reconnect for you if it's in the connection pattern, and we'll say that later, uh, and it will queue all the stuff for you. And a quick note here, um, if you decide to work with the sockets, the, um, the parts that act as a server are the stable parts in your uh, infrastructure, and you should use bind for that, and the parts that do the connecting. So if you have multiple clients, you use um, connect for that. So the dynamic, so if you have multiple uh, clients, use connect, and the other parts should use bind. You create sockets, so, so you start with creating a socket. Um, and sockets, the beauty of SewerMQ is that the code stays the same no matter what socket you use. So we can use uh, inproc, this is just messaging in the same process. You can use IPC, which is uh, passing messages around on the same box. Um, and then you can use the network to do the messaging. And the, the cool thing is that you, uh, when you create uh, the socket, you can just swap the, uh, the transportation types and the rest of the code still works the same. So that's a, uh, you will see some code examples later. You can also do multicast PGM, but I won't cover that because that is not as used as much as you would think. So ZeroMQ creates the sockets and creates the, uh, how the sockets work. Uh, by using a concept called connection patterns. Uh, a connection pattern is a pair of sockets that has to be used. So if you want to use request reply, you have to use the um, rec and wrap sockets. So you can't mix pop and rec sockets because it's, yeah, it won't work. So we have four basic patterns, request reply, uh, pop sub, and pipeline. And pipeline is the push and pull sockets. There's a, 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 um, 
another one called exclusive pair, but I won't cover that. It's more or less conventional sockets, so just two sockets that, that, work, uh, that talk to each other. With those four patterns, they have also uh, more advanced patterns. They're called the high-level patterns. See the guide for that because there are a lot, uh, a lot of different combinations, a lot of different use cases, so just see the guide for that. So let's have a quick look at the three patterns. We have request reply. <coughs> um, and this is just a client talking to a, a server, sending a message. Uh, and waiting for a, a response. If a client sends a, a message, it has to wait for a, for a response. This is just a synchronous uh, socket. Some code here. This is the code uh, on the ZeroMQ guide. So just look at the ZeroMQ guide and you will see the same examples. Uh, the link is here every time. So to start using ZuriMQ, you start with creating a so uh, context. With that context, you can create a socket, and a socket always has this socket type. So here we are uh, creating the server that will respond to anything that's coming uh, from the client. Because this is the server part, we bind to this TCP port, and now we go in a loop wait for uh, an, a, uh, a request to come in, do some work, and send a response. On the other, on the other side, we have the client. It also does, uh, creates a context. Here it connects to the same socket with a, re with a request socket, and just loops and does 10 um, requests. So this will just create, uh, create a script of 10 seconds that uh, prints what it is receiving. Um, request reply can be used to do uh, remote procedure call or doing uh, tasks, uh, sending tasks to a server. The second pattern is a uh, pub sub, and pub sub is used to do just uh, distribute data. Here uh, we can have on um, the publisher. Uh, in, in the example, you see a um, weather station that's generating um, temperature and humidity and just spitting it out. And the, uh, the subscribers can um, connect to the, to the publisher um, and receive those updates. It can add filters to the, con uh, to the content that's coming in. So if it's generating, in the example, you see um, a weather station that's generating um, temperature for different zip codes of Belgium. So you can say this one is just listening to the zip codes of Antwerp, this one is listening to the zip codes of Brussels. So ZeroMQ uh, will be responsible for filtering out the data. So your PHP or whatever you want to use can be sure it will only receive that data. This is um, asynchronous and also if a publisher is generating data and no, listen, uh, no subscriber is listening, those messages are just gone. So it's like a chat server. You, you, you get messages from your clients. You publish them to all your uh, subscribers. But there's no, if nobody is listening, it's just the message is gone. So here is uh, the fictional weather station. We bind. Here we have an example that we can bind to multiple sockets. It would just send the same data over the, over the multiple sockets. We uh, create a, a publisher socket, and then we just go, we just spit out data infinitely. So if you do this, it, CPU will go up and stuff. But it will just create a uh, um, lines that generate fictional temperatures and humidities. And the first one here is the zip code, and it will just loop and spit out data. On the other side, uh, we, cre we create a, a subscriber socket and we listen to the TCP socket here. And here we, f we start filtering. So we filter on the zip code uh, of Antwerp here. And we just get only the data for Antwerp. All the other data is just lost because nobody in our case is listening to the other zip codes. So we loop over uh, the output every time we get 
an answer for Antwerp. We just do the average and print it. It's a useful, uh, useless example, but it shows you, pops up. Um, the third one is a pipeline, and this is using uh, push-pull sockets. And here is an example of uh, a, a MapReduce uh, system. So on this side, we have a ventilator that's sending out uh, tasks to different workers. And these workers can just scale. They, can, they do their magic, so let's say they are processing log files. This one is, is pushing out tasks. And ZeroMQ will make sure that every, uh, every worker here will get a new task. So it will, only, it will see all the workers that are available. And it will send the tasks, uh, a task um, to every uh, worker. It does the work. And on the end, it will send its aggregated data or its, I don't know, reporting to the sync here. And the sync receives those updates. And the sync will also. Um, not block on the first worker, it will just go, uh, it called, that's called third queuing, it will just go to every uh, worker. So in this example, we have the ventilator, we have the worker in the middle, and then the sink that's collecting the data. It's again, not a very useful example, but uh, we bind, so in this case, uh, this are, these are the dynamic parts, so they connect to both sides, and the sink and the ventilator are the stable parts, so they, are, they bind to the, to the port. So here we bind to, the, to this port as a, a push socket, <coughs> and we just generate work and put it to, uh, to, all the, to all the workers that are available. So here, again, like with the email uh, sending, the script will be run in a, a less than a set, no, over more than a second, um, and then it will just stop. And it will send a <coughs> workload to the worker. Um, and the worker, it, it's connecting, it's connecting uh, a pull and a push socket um, to the front, so the ventilator and the sink. And it will go in a loop and just sleep for the amount of time they got and send their status to the, to the sink. <coughs> and the sink again binds on a, a pool, uh, a pool socket, and it will receive uh, all the calculated data and print how long uh, all the workers took to do the work. The example here is to show that you can just add more workers and the job will be done quicker. And your ventilator and your uh, sink are not aware of the amount of workers that are doing the work because Guillaume, uh, Guillaume, ZooMQ is responsible for connecting those, uh, those sockets. <laughs> A quick note about messages in ZooMQ. Uh, messages are atomic. That means the complete message will get from one side to the other or uh, no part of that message will, be, uh, will get there. ZeroMQ is responsible for that. So the moment in your language, in your, uh, um, in your PHP, the moment you get a, a string, you know you have the complete string, or ZeroMQ won't even notify the language binding. It has, the, it has, the complete, uh, it has a, a message. Like I said before, the message, it's just a string. It's, um, it's a string without a format. And it's also only the size of the string that's going over the wire. So if you have a, a one gigabyte log file, the, um, the string over the wire will be one gigabyte, and in front, the length of how long that string is. So it's very, it's very uh, small. It doesn't add a lot of stuff around it. It's just a string, and it will get there or it won't. Uh, it can also be multi-part, and that is used if we start adding more components in the, in the network. We can use that for routing. So if a message comes over a proxy, the proxy can add some uh, headers to it. So it can be multi-part, but that's more advanced. In between the base patterns and the high-level patterns, we have extended patterns. 
And these, uh, th those are just extended um, request reply, extended WebSub. And what we do here is we, we add intermediaries in the middle of the network. Uh, so we create something that looks like Gearman. Um, we put uh, a part in the middle that the from them that the workers can connect to. So we start using um, a known part in the network. Um, so clients can connect to that, to that part in the middle and just the workers can also do only connect to that middle, uh, to that middleman. So they don't have to worry about how they talk to each other. So this starts to look like, like Gearman. So we can use a combination of all the, all the blocks that we saw uh, on the slides and we can start building Gearman. So we just uh, need to add some intermediaries to connect the clients and the workers in the network. And that would look something like this. We just have a request reply socket, but instead of connecting request reply directly, we add a broker in the middle. And the broker introduces new um, socket types. Here we have the router and the dealer. And the router is just um, a reply socket that can talk to a dealer in the background. And a dealer is just uh, a request socket that can talk to uh, the router. So if we have this, we just can add some code. Uh, we, here we can add a persistent queue, for instance. And they have that covered in the Z guide, uh, the Zero MQ guide. It's called the Titanic pattern. Um, so if you want to add a persistent queue in the middle, just look that up. Uh, they have a solution for all kinds of uh, problems. It's called the Titanic pattern. They have the lazy pirate pattern. They have all kinds of crazy names. But it solves all uh, real world problems. So if the base um, if the base uh, examples don't make sense, just have a scroll down and see real world big examples. So to put the broker in the middle, we can actually still use the request and reply code that we had before, because that's just connecting to a socket, and it's the only thing that is changing in the server and the and the, uh, the only thing that is changing in the server part uh, here is that it is connecting to a socket. It's not binding because now this is the stable part. So the only thing that is changing in the, the server um, code is that this is connecting instead of binding. And the broker binds the two sockets here with this newly introduced uh, socket types. And it uses a pull. And the pull is necessary because we start looping over the, um, over the, um, we start looping and waiting for a, um, a message to come in. But if we would start looping here, so this is the next, uh, the next part of this code. <coughs> if we would start looping here, we would connect to the, to the back end and wait for a message to receive or the front end because this is the first. So it's just, it will block on one uh, socket. So the other one could, se could be sending messages, but the broker wouldn't know because it's just waiting for one side. So pull just, uh, pull just um, fixes that by doing here some um, event stuff. And if something is happening, we can check if we are talking to the front end or to the back end. So this part and this part is actually just the same. Uh, but it's instead of doing it from the front end to the back end, it's sending it from the front, front back end to the front end. And this here is the if you're doing uh, multi-part messaging, you have to also send all the multi-parts, uh, all the parts of the of the message to the front end or the back end. So, and here we could add some code to store it on disk or do some uh, queuing magic. Um, some extras for, from, uh, for Zero MQ, um, they have a concept called devices. And devices are things that you can put in the middle of your network. So they have the Q device, for instance. And this kind of solves the Gearman problem that you can have a device that's already 
uh, defines or that describes how you should, uh, should uh, set up that device. You put it in the network and I think this will be more uh, this will be done more and more in the future of, of Zero MQ that they put that they create devices that you can reuse. But it's just definitely something you have to look at. Um, there are some I don't know rumors or um, sounds that they are <coughs> going to be in the Linux kernel itself because the messaging is done so good that the socket the, the socket that it will be will be added to the Linux kernel. We'll see about that. Uh, I said it a few times before, go to the Zero MQ guide, scroll down, because larger applications don't use this WAC wrap server thing. They use a combination of all that. They use, if you have the chat uh, example, they use pubs up for distributing uh, strings to all the clients that are connected. But they use push-pull to push uh, a message to the server that, hey, that you can actually publish to its subscribers. So. It's a, it's, a, it's a combination of all those sockets and connections that um, make up larger applications. I don't go deeper or sure more about this because Zero MQ can't fit in one one hour uh, session. So. so, in conclusion, shit. Um, both solutions are very flexible. Um, they are, from a language point of view, they have a lot of languages you can use. Um, if you're doing image resizing and you're using PHP on the front end and PHP to do the actual image resizing, and you see that the back end is, is becoming a bottleneck, just port it to C and the front end won't even know this. So both solutions can do that. Also from an architectural point of view, you can move it to different boxes quite easily because if we go to this example, no, this example, you start using IP, uh, IPC here to do the testing, and you, if it's uh, if it's working, you just change it to TCP, and it magically works. But it works it, it works in the same way. Um, yeah, it's not on the slide here; it's uh, fallen off. But the given is the same. The only thing is you can put all the worker and the server and the clients on the same machine but it still uses the network but the, uh, the, the, the idea is the same that you can use you can start small and because the way your code is written and organized you can just scale out so um, to get back to the title of this presentation they are different animals uh, use Gilman if you want a quick setup if you want a, a job server out of the box just pick it from your package manager it does the job job very well it's It, uh, has f uh, it has all the bugs that you would encounter if you really, uh, wrote it again with Zero MQ. It has that covered. It survives big scale uh, companies that use it. So if you want a job server, it's uh, an excellent pick. You can use Zero MQ if you want to do insanely quick uh, messaging. I was planning to do a demo on the background that was running from the beginning of the session to the end, but it was kind of useless and my laptop would just burn up. Um, you can you can use ZeroMQ if you want if you want to have more um, control about how your messaging is, is working how you are you can do a lot of fine tuning. The only drawback is that you have to write if you want to do the job thing you have to write it yourself. So, but if you want to do uh, messaging very fast in your next project test, use ZeroMQ. It's very very cool. Um, an extra on the conclusion. Everything is going very fast, uh, so you have, to, you have to keep up. We did some database replication where the workers that did the replication actually were quicker than the transactional commits on the front end, so we had to do some. So you have to, you have to keep up. Um, the best thing you can do is just don't share state, because if you share state, it's, e uh, it's, a diffi it's more difficult to scale out. And uh, watch your memory. Uh, I don't know how many people of you uh, went to the memory session yesterday, but if you have, you have uh, the, the workers, they are long running processes. So watch your memory that you don't blow up your worker. So this is uh, uh, the thing I 
wanted to show with also the Gearman manager. If you want to do processing work with PHP, don't do it with PHP. You can do it with PC 10L fork or I don't know. Just use Supervisor D. Uh, focus on the worker. So in the example of uh, with Gearman, uh, with the worker that's sending emails, just focus on that. And that supervisor D spin up six of that uh, six uh, processes with that worker. So supervisor D has a config file. You just say, I want six workers of this process. I want three workers of this process. You start supervisor, and it will it will be responsible for making sure all those workers are up. And if it crashes, it will spin it up again. And it also has the logic for if it's if it crashes within a second. Five times in a row, something is probably wrong, and it will just kill it. So you have you have some more control about processing. So just focus um, on the PHP side, and that supervisor do the pro do the processing stuff. Uh, some resources. Um, the guys at Second Life here did the same thing that they want to compare message queues, and they actually just running the same problem, uh, not the problem, but the same conclusion. It's they, they start comparing 0MQ and RabbitMQ, and so it's just there are different things. So that's a good read. If you want to get started with 0MQ, these two are less verbose than the Z guide, because it can be intimidating if you want to start. Mm -hmm. But once you read that and you know what 0MQ is, you definitely have to read the PHP version of the Zero Q guide because it has a lot of philosophical sideways and it's uh, it's a good read, but you have to have several weeks or months. Uh, there's also a printed version of that Zero Q guide, but it's the C version of that, so it's not that useful for me anyway. Uh, but if you want to have the C version, you can use that. I think I have three minutes for questions and I try to do my best.